Hey guys, PG Tech here. Today we're going to be building an aesthetic white gaming PC for $1,800. Asus sent over their new AP201 MATX case, so we're going to be using this. I think this case is super cute and I love how small of a footprint it'll have on my desk. With this case, you can still use a full-size power supply and a 360 millimeter AIO, which I love. Asus also sent over their Prime Z790M Plus motherboard and their new 4070, which is this cute dual fan card. And of course it's white to match the rest of the build. I'm super excited to show you guys this, so let's get into it. This is the Asus Prime Z790. It's basically a bare bones motherboard that has the basics, but no frills. If you don't plan to overclock, you can even go for a cheaper B760 motherboard. This one doesn't have onboard Wi-Fi and it also doesn't have an IO shield attached. It has seven USB-A and one USB-C port in the back, which may be a bit limiting. I'm pairing this with the Intel 13700K CPU. If you want to save a couple bucks, you can always get the KF version, which doesn't have integrated graphics. The motherboard supports DDR5, so I'm going with the trusty dusty Corsair Vengeance 32 gigabyte white RGB kit. Okay, I kind of want to do things a little bit differently because I always just show the same angle, but I am kind of scared. So we'll just see how this goes. I had originally wanted to film this video like a couple days ago, but my hand got injured. So I couldn't actually like do anything for this whole week. And now it's finally back to full force. So here we've got the Intel 13700K. Here she is and I'll show you the back of it too. All right, and now let's see if I can do this properly. Can you guys even see it? Yay, we did it. Okay, now for RAM, uh, two and two. The Corsair RAM looks great, but if you're on a tighter budget, I would definitely recommend something without RGB, like the Silicon Power 32 gigabyte DDR5 kit, which is only $78. To install the SSD, there's a small standoff included with the motherboard that you'll need to screw on first. I have the Crucial P3 Plus on hand, which is a great inexpensive SSD at only $45 for one terabyte, but it's definitely not the fastest. I would recommend going for an SSD with faster speeds for your boot drive. And at the time I'm editing this, the Crucial P5 Plus is only $59.99 and it has read speeds of up to 6,600 megabytes per second versus the 5,000 megabytes per second of the P3+. Plus. We're gonna crack open the ROG Ryujin 3 AIO to grab the bracket and screws for the motherboard and install those before getting the case and anything else ready. With the AP201, all of the panels come off without any tools, so I should be able to just, let's see, tempered glass, handle with care. Okay. <laughs> We're going to be installing the power supply first since it's here in the front. So we're gonna to wanna to do that before putting the motherboard and everything in. <laughs> Second panel. Ooh. <laughs> Why did it just snap back on? Okay. Nice. Okay. Oh, this would be really nice to paint actually. I could totally, wait, you could totally paint this case pink. So to install the power supply, we're gonna to have to take this front thing off. Okay, so this little thing comes out. We need to take this bracket out. So there's one, two, two screws. We can take this cage out. And there are three levels to the cage thing. So if you have a bunch of drives, you're gonna wanna mount the power supply back onto the topmost one. But if you have a 360 AIO like we do, we're gonna wanna put it in the bottom one. Okay, so we're gonna be putting the power supply into this little bracket. It goes into the PC like this. So we have the GameMax Pro Rampage power supply in white. This is 850 watts. Normally, I would not recommend getting a white power supply just because I feel like it's a waste of money, but for this case, you can see it. So I think it is worth it. Hey, they give you like a jumper cable. Is this a jumper cable? That's kind of nice, I've never seen that before. Here's what this power supply looks like. We probably want it to get air in like this. Power supplies usually come with screws, but I'm using the four screws from the screw bag included with the AP201 case to secure the PSU to the bracket. I've never used a Game Max power supply before, but they were all on sale for Prime Day, so I ended up buying a couple to try them out. I love that it came with a screw container. 
This one also came with the 16 pin 12 volt power cable for 40 series GPUs, but for the GPU I'm using today, I only need the standard 8 pin. I'm plugging in all the cables first before installing, and we'll need one CPU cable, one PCIe cable, and the motherboard cable. Before we install the motherboard, we need to pop in the IO shield. This will protect your PC from dust. I actually used to be terrified of doing this because I saw so many horror stories of people cutting themselves in the process, but it's totally fine. Now we can finally install the motherboard. The case came with just a jumble of different screws in a bag, so I used the container from the PSU to sort them first. Make sure you secure all these screws tightly. I like to try and connect the CPU power connectors here since it'll be harder to reach later. It's time to set up the AIO. I've never used an ASUS cooler before and they're packaged so well. A little too well actually because I struggled so hard to get the plastic protective covers off the radiator. There are three ARGB fans included and I decided I want mine to intake since I'm not adding any additional case fans. Since they'll be top mounted, it also won't matter that the ugly side is visible. I try to position the cables to face the back of the case to make cable management easier. The included screws are black, which I do wish they were silver instead, but I'm using the long screws to secure the fans into the radiator. In the AIO box, there's also an RGB splitter that I'm connecting to the RGB header on the motherboard and routing the cable to the back before installing the AIO because once that's installed, it'll be blocked. Now is also a good time to install the fan splitter to the top CPU fan connector as well. I tried to install the radiator with the tubes to the right, but the power supply still blocks it and I don't want to put too much strain on the hose. I also plugged in the PSU power cable since the PSU is mounted in the front, there's this extension cable that connects it to the outside of the case. I decided to flip the cooler installation, which meant I also had to flip the middle fan so I can still hide the cables. Now that everything fits, it's time to use six of those shorter screws to secure everything to the top of the case. This AIO comes with thermal paste pre-applied, so all you have to do is remove the giant plastic cover and screw the cooler onto the four posts we installed earlier. Make sure you screw them in a star formation to ensure even pressure is being applied. Now I'm connecting the front panel USB connectors to the motherboard. I love that the cables for this case are white to match the aesthetic. The case also comes with a fan on the back, so I'm connecting that to a random fan connector here as well. Here's the layout for all of the other connectors, audio, USB for the AIO, front panel power, and all the other cables we connected earlier. On the back, each fan on the AIO also has an RGB cable and a fan cable. The three pin RGB connectors get plugged into the RGB splitters and the fan connectors get plugged into the fan splitter. Super high level tactics, yeah? You got this. I also decided to use some cable extensions for the motherboard and PCIe cables because I just didn't like how they looked. Feel free to skip this. But for extensions, you can basically just plug them into the power supply cables. They do not plug directly into the power supply. Then you just connect it to your motherboard or GPU as usual. I also put the included cable combs on them to keep them neat. We're finally in the home stretch. Asus also sent over their dual 4070 OC edition in white. This is a super cute two fan card that would be great for small form factor builds. It uses just one 8 pin PCIe connector for power and has three display ports and one HDMI port. I think it would have looked so cute vertically mounted, but a bracket for that is at least $50, so I opted to skip that. I also forgot to record this, but you'll need to unscrew the first two brackets on the side of the case to install this GPU and make sure the slot on the motherboard is pushed open. I had also gone ahead and pulled the PCIe extension through the front so I could connect it directly to the GPU. Don't forget to screw it in on the side. Now it's time for some cable management magic. Luckily there's not too many cables for this build and it would be even less if we didn't use extensions. The AP201 comes with some velcro straps, but they aren't the kind you can easily tighten. Now it's time to pop on all the panels and hope it boots. Don't forget to screw the cover on the side to hide the power supply and cables. There's no power switch. The power switch is inside, so make sure you turn the inside one on. <gasps> Yay, everything lit up! And here's what she looks like from every angle. I kind of hate how the power cable is at the top. I do wish it was on the bottom, but the RGB and everything looks so good. I had the cinema roll peeker that I really wanted to put on the PC, but I could not decide where I wanted to put it. If you're not about that life, you can also buy the mesh version of this case, which is $10 cheaper. And then you could also go for an air cooler or a cheaper AIO and no RGB at all, saving you about $300. That being said, I love this build. I do wish the Asus lighting software had more functionality because I could not figure out how to rotate the display on the cooler to match my orientation. The Asus software does have a bunch of preloaded effects and you can even upload your own pictures or GIFs though. This is probably the most in-depth tutorial I've ever done so far. I hope it was helpful. Let me know what you guys want to see next and of course, follow for more.